and we are going to uh, continue on with this problem of figuring out the stresses uh, in the stress tensor, figuring out how do we um, how do we write or denote our new stress tensor at this 30 degree angle, and how do we figure out our principal stress state? Stress state and our maximum shear stress state. And right now we're going to use this kind of concept of more circle. So let's go ahead and write out our stress tensor N six six zero 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 zero. So we're dealing with again plane uh, stress. So more circle. Let's actually close this guy out here. Um, you could kind of see this kind of circular geometry. Um, and you can see here, the center of the circle is given by this, the radius of the circle is given by this. So you could plug and chug and use some of these equations, but you could actually just look at it from geometrically. If we plot our shear stresses and our normal stresses as the coordinate systems. So let's go ahead and look at that for a second here. Um, actually, let's go back right here. So we're going to make a plot of shear stress as a function of our normal stresses here. So my shear stresses are going to be here and here. My normal stresses are right here and here. So we can think of these as xy coordinates. So I have, again, these are all in megapascals. So I have a shear or normal stress at 22. I have a normal stress at 10. We're going to each also have a y coordinate at 6 and 6. And because of circular symmetry, they'll also have a coordinate here and here. And there's going to be some circle that goes through these four points. So now, what I'm left with, if I want to find essentially the stress state here, let's look at it right here. So the stress state here, right here, right here, uh, I need to kind of look and understand and figure out, okay, what is my, I need to figure out the center of my circle, I need to figure out the radius of my circle, and I need to figure out if I want to figure out the rotation to get to the principal stress state, i.e. where my stresses, my normal stresses are maximized and I have no shear stresses, I need to look at how to rotate this line here, some angle theta. So I need to figure out what is this theta angle here. So it's going to be a function of some you know, fairly straightforward geometry once we get into this. So let's look and focus in on here. So I'm going to have a basically a point here, a triangle. Yeah, I could draw it correctly. Triangle here. There's going to be some point here at the center. We know that there's other point here if we draw. It's going to have some angle theta. It's going to have also this point at 22. Again, right here. That's all we're doing, drawing this triangle. This length here, I hypotenuse, is going to be the radius. And then the distance here and here, we already know that value, actually. It's 6. So we know that this side has a length of 6. So I need to figure out what my radius is and also what my center is. Well, I could do that with Mathematica. So Let's go ahead and look at the points that we have at our disposal there. Uh, I wish I could. Oh. So I first need to find out what my radius is. Well, I can just take the Euclidean distance. So I have two points, right? So I have this point at uh, 22 and 6. So this is my data points. So data. You could do a simpler fit than this, but uh, this will work. 10 and minus 6. So that was the line I was working with previously. So if I fit that line, fit data, 1, x, and x, I could find where that crosses my x-axis. So I see that my center point here is going to occur, and when, this, when does my y equal 0? When x equals 16. So my center, here, my center is equal to 16 megapascals. So that center is going to be 16 right there. So if the center is 16, I know that this distance also is a distance of 6. So that's going to also, again, I can see some unique identity right now uh, swirling in my head. Um, but one quick thing here, um, this angle is not just theta. It's actually 2 theta. So why is this angle 2 theta? And excuse me for the uh, mistake previously. Because in more circle space, again, we're doing this whole transformation if, uh, let's go back to our kind of notes here. We're doing this entire transformation, and we see that these equations are functions not of theta here, but really of 2 theta. So you could see, just kind of like I mentioned in the previous video, 
two theta pairs, two theta, two theta. So when we're dealing with more circle space, and we're using kind of these, you know, transformations uh, that we are uh, actually resolving those shear stresses, uh, and we're actually writing this function effectively as a function of two theta. So when you're in more circle space, we call that, um, or actually I like to refer to it as, you're in like two theta space. So we're going to rotate an angle two theta here. So excuse me, not theta. Uh, so that's kind of the key idea here. But you can kind of get a you know, concept of what two theta is going to be uh, and what theta will be in real space. So uh, what is my R? So let's go ahead. We could calculate that now. So my R is going to be so my R squared. It's going to be to 36 plus 36. It's going to be side squared. So it's going to be the square root of 72. That's going to be equal to something like, let's go ahead and Mathematica. We can actually confirm that. So square root of 72. This square, and then you can do also the Euclidean distance of my data. Oops. Data one. And data two. Let's see. Again, that's the whole distance. Again, we need to divide by two to get our radius. And we see we get the same exact uh, same answer. Excellent. So now I could also figure out what is that uh, what is that angle to theta. So if I take the opposite of adjacent, so if solve for tan of two times theta, so set that equal to let's go back to our more circle, our here. If I want to do tan of two theta opposite over adjacent, so that'd just be a value of one. So let's go back, solve for theta. Hopefully people remember this geometric identity. So again, we get one over pi, one over two, times, which is pi over eight. Eight times 180 divided by pi, get in degrees. So 22.5. Or as you kind of might imagine, this two theta is a 45 degree angle. So we need to rotate here 45 degrees in two theta space, 22.5 degrees in real space, uh, basically clockwise. And again, or you could again, you could do the same thing, same procedure from here, and you could calculate the values here, uh, you know, basically counterclockwise as well uh, to get. So we need to move this two theta value of 45 degrees in order to get to our principal stress state here. So the principal stress state. Uh, occurs right here. So once we do that, now we can so we can kind of see what our sigma one value is. So our sigma one is just going to be what is it? Sigma one is going to be equal to the center plus my radius. Sigma two is going to be equal to the center minus my radius. So let's go ahead and plug those values in. So sigma one equals center minus my. I'm going to set this as my radius. Center minus, and my center is going to be C equals 16. So C minus R. And I want to multiply this by okay, 10 to the 6. I want mega Pascals. My sig 2 is going to be the exact same thing. Actually, sig 1 is a plus. Excuse me. It's going to be minus. And here we have it. All right. So let's go ahead and check. And this is the beauty of our kind of answer. Look at this previous sigma, sig one. 2.4 times 10 to the seventh, 2.4 times. We're getting the exact same result. And look at our theta value is the exact same thing as well. 22.5, 22.5. Fantastic. But here we can more easily visualize uh, and solve some of these problems. Actually, here we go back to our... So let's figure out. All right. So from this 40, you know, again, if this the two theta angle was 45 degrees, what's the rotation that I need to get to my maximum shear state? Well, my maximum shear is just going to be this coordinate right here. If I want to find max shear, I want to be right here. I want to rotate like this. So if this angle is two, and two theta is 45, then to get to here, I need to rotate counterclockwise a two theta of equal to 45 to get to my maximum shear strength. And my maximum shear value 
is just going to be my tensor is going to be this. It's going to be 16. Then it's like 16. You know, <laughs> uh, you know your x and your y. 16, 16. And then it's going to be this uh, value right here. Break it up to 0, 0. Uh, and this is going to be my, again, the radius. Just the radius. That's 6 square root 2, or my radius. That's it. 16, 16, that's it. That's kind of your values. So that's all you're kind of uh, dealing with in this uh, kind of situation, this scenario. So let's go ahead and confirm that. So let's go ahead and my radius is this. So radius times 10 to the 6, 8.4. Let's go ahead and check and see if that's the same value as our tau max. Here's our sigma the xy prime exactly the same so again our two expressions are making sense they're matching our values now let's figure out what is the value or actually what is my stress state let's go back over here if i want to rotate let's go here so i want to rotate counterclockwise 30 degrees in real space well let's go back to our problem right here So I want to rotate from my original stress state here. This is getting a little bit messy, so I'm going to redraw it right now. So I want to rotate. So now, so I want to rotate from my original stress state 22, 10, 6, 6, here, here. Here, here. My center is at 16. So I want to rotate from here. I want to go, actually, let's go from here. I want to go clockwise, or counterclockwise, excuse me, and I want to rotate a theta equals to 30 degrees. Well, then my 2 theta rotation, so if I want to rotate 2 theta counterclockwise, that would be 60 degrees here. So I need to rotate and figure out what is the point on this curve if I rotate an angle of 60 degrees. So 2 theta equals 60 degrees. So if I do that rotation, I can figure out what are my x and y value uh, points there. A little bit tricky here and why I always prefer to do my, uh, <laughs> essentially the linear algebra approach. Um, so remember, the rotation to go from here to here, this as a 2 theta of equal to 45 degrees. So now you're looking at a triangle that has some point here that, again, now has some value uh, of 2 theta. The remaining would be equal to 15 degrees. So you're looking at a triangle that has a center here. You know, it can extend, excuse me. So the center is at 16. There's some point here. There's a radius here that we know. This is going to be our 2 theta value. We know that 2 theta is equal to it's like 15 or minus 15, you know, uh, 15 degrees. And we'd have to calculate out uh, kind of these values uh, moving forward. And the same thing would hold, again, if we did this rotation for this, this would be the same thing here. You'd have a point, again, this uh, very similar triangle as well. So you can actually go ahead and calculate out uh, those values and get those points. So, for example, we know that this R value, if it's equal to 6, uh, six half, we are going to kind of see that point right here. So we know, actually, let's figure out, let's figure out these different uh, values here. So let's go ahead and use our kind of circle geometry at this point. I mean Mathematica. So uh, let's go ahead and figure out. So if I can look, I could solve for that y value. So I want to look because I need to figure out what is this distance. So I need to figure out that y value, which is going to correspond to my tau. And I need to figure out what is this point right here, i.e., this distance, which will also correspond to my one of my sigma xx or some of my sigma yy uh, values. So let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, so all I'm going to do is do my sine of 2 theta is going to be equal to this, you know, value x here. 
is equal to x divided by my hypotenuse, r. So we'll kind of figure that out. Excuse me for kind of a mess here. Uh, x over my radius, so opposite over my hypotenuse. Hopefully my geometry is okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and solve for that. So solve for sine of my two theta is equal to 30, actually, excuse me, 15 degrees. And I'm going to set that equal to my opposite, which is x, divided by my, my radius. Solve for x. Let me do that numerically. And so this is my value right here. And again, remember, it's this value is negative here. So let's go back to my drawing, our more circle. This value is negative because it's below, it's going to be below here. So it's going to kind of fall around here. It's going to be the negative value, whatever that is. So if I look at that expression, so it's going to be negative, it's 10 to the 6. So it'll be this negative value. So that's going to be my new tau in this 30 degree rotation. And if we look back here, it matches. Beautiful. So we can also figure out what is the other value, my x value, which is just going to be the cosine. So, uh-oh, that doesn't match any of these values here. But wait, that's my distance, remember? So let's go back to here. This is that distance. So I need to do my center minus that distance in order to figure out that value. I knew it. I just need to remind myself. I never make any mistakes in these videos. I'm perfect. <laughs> Everyone here knows that's not the case whatsoever. Uh, so now all I have to do is this times 10 to the 6th. And then right here, you can also get my 16 plus. And you can figure out which one is xx and yy. We can double check these values up here. And we can see they match here, 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 here. Beautiful. But you can see it's kind of laborious, right? Again, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a geometry person, so I don't like to use this method um, for this particular. I think the Morse circle is very, very excellent to kind of visualize the rotations, and it's a useful tool that you can utilize uh, and the one that you might need on problems. But once you get to kind of figuring out what's the stress tensor, specifically for this problem, what's the stress tape at some arbitrary rotation, I'm going to show you a new technique that you may, might not have used before, uh, and hopefully it'll be a little bit helpful. So we will show you that in the next video. Thanks. Have a good one. See you next one.